William Henry Scott divided the society into three different class. We have the ruling class, which are the Lakan or Raha, the Datu and the Maginuo. The Freeman, the Timawa and the Maharlika. And we have also the slaves, the Aliping na Mamahay and also the Aliping Sagigilid. The Lakan or Raha was the paramount Datu of a large town. A paramount datu of the Confederacy of Barangay States. In a confederacy forged by alliances among polities, the datu would convene to choose a paramount chief from among themselves. Their communal decisions would be based on datu's prowess in battle, leadership, and network of allegiances. The datu were maginoo with personal followings. His responsibilities included governing his people, leading them in war, protecting them from enemies, and settling disputes. Usually, four to ten datu live with their duluhan in a town. Maginoo comprised the ruling class of the Tagalogs. Ginoo was an honorific, both men and women. Panginoon sometimes shorted as puon, when addressing them directly, were Maginoo who had many slaves and other valuable property like houses and boats. The Timawa were non-slaves who could attach themselves to the Datu of their choice. They could use and bequeath a portion of barangay land and rendered services and agricultural labor to the Datu. Members included illegitimate children of Maginoo and slaves, and former Alipin who paid off their debts. The Maharlika were similar to the Timawa, except they also rendered military services to the Datu. Alipin na Mamahay lived in their own houses, apart from their debtor. They were allowed to farm a portion of Barangay land, but they were expected to turn over a portion of their harvest to the master. Member includes those who inherited debts from namamahay parents, Timawa who went into debt, and former male Alipin Sagigilid who married or bought their ways into namamahay status. Alipin Sagigilid lived in their debtor's house and were entirely dependent on him for food and shelter. Members included children born in debtor's house, example children of other Alipin or Gintubo, and children of parents who were too poor to raise them. Babaylan were highly respected members of the community, on par with the Maginuu, in the absence of the Datu. The Babaylan takes in the rule of interim head of the community. Babaylans were powerful ritual specialists who were believed to have influenced over the weather and top various spirits in the natural and spiritual realms. Babaylan were healed in such high regard as they were believed to possess powers that can block the dark magic of an evil datu or spirit and heal the sick or wounded. Among other powers of the Babaylan were to ensure a safe pregnancy and childbirth. As a spirit medium, Babaylans also lead rituals with offerings to the various divinities or deities. As an expert in divine and herb lore, incantations and concoctions of remedies, antidotes, and varieties of potions from various roots, leaves, and seeds, the Babaylans were also regarded as allies of certain Datus in subjugating an enemy. Hence, the Babaylans were also known for their specialization in medical and divine combat. According to William Henry Scott, a Catalonan could be of either sex or male transvertites, but were usually women from prominent families who were wealthy in their own right.
according to Luciano P.R. Santiago, as a remuneration for their services, they received a good part of the offerings of food, wine, clothing, and gold, the quality and quantity of which depended on the social status of the supplicant. Thus, the Catalonians filled a very prestigious as well as lucrative rule in society.